Today we'll be painting a brutish cave troll for our Minds of Moria series. After being stirred by something in the mine, the goblins seek out the source of this disturbance and swoop down on the fellowship. As they scuttle into Barlin's tomb for their next victims, a loud thudding noise breaks through the sound of the fight. They have a cave troll. Hello, and a warm welcome to the Swords and Brushes YouTube channel. On this channel, I will cover all things Lord of the Rings and Middle-earth related to painting miniatures and making scenery. If that is something that you would enjoy watching, then replace the light button's mithril armour with a shirt of ramen noodles sprayed silver and send them on their way. And now, let's paint a cave troll. Before we start painting our troll today, we will need to undercoat our miniature, and this was done with some Citadel Black Spray. In this video today, I'll be introducing some brushes from one of my favourite sets to use for monster and scenery painting, and they are makeup brushes. And no, I did not nick them from the missus. These brushes are inexpensive and can be found in the beauty aisle of supermarkets as well as online. So to kick off painting our troll, we will use some Hardened Carapace by Army Painter. Only needing a small amount of paint on our makeup brush, we can apply a nice thin layer over the skin and the scales of the troll. A couple reasons why I like to use makeup brushes is that the bristles are super soft and they have a large surface area which can cover a model very quickly. Don't worry about getting any paint onto the loincloth or the metals, as we will cover this up later so you don't need to be too precise at this stage. Now that the base coat has been achieved, we will now switch over to the smaller blusher brush and use this for the majority of our cave troll. The first colour for the skin was leather brown and applied to the front part of the troll and the inner section of the arms and the majority of the legs. A small amount of paint was applied to our palette. The bristles of the brush do not need much paint on the tips, and a small amount does go a long way. The paint was then applied onto the miniature in a circular motion. This slowly builds up the layers and makes a nice gradient as you go. I would suggest to practice this technique on a test miniature first, so you can get used to using a makeup brush. Or, like me when I first used them, on everything! as I loved the results they gave, and I had fun playing around with them. The troll will have a nice transition from the darker grey to the lighter browny colours. But for now, you can see how far we have painted around the side for the skin. Next up, we will use Monster Brown and start adding layers to the skin and gradually make them lighter. Here, we want to focus on the pronounced outer areas of the troll such as the belly, chest and the legs. We do not need to cover as much as the previous layer, as we want some of that darker brown to still be seen near the grey areas. And thus, our skin gradients start to take shape. The next layer of colour that will be added is Banshee Brown. Like before, we do not need to apply as much as the previous layer. And all we are doing here is lighting the skin tones and sticking to our gradient. With just a few colours and not much time taken, I can hope you see why I love using makeup brushes on a miniature. That being said, my question of the day for you is, what techniques or methods do you use which either gives a nice result or speeds up the painting process? Let me know in the comments below and share your insights with the Swords and Brushes community. Now that the skin area has been painted with the makeup brushes, we can move on to the next section, which is the scales on the troll's back. We are looking to create a lighter colour which will sit in between the individual scales here. So by mixing Monster Brown with Quickshade Wash Mixing Medium as a 50-50 mix, it was applied to the gaps of the scales. Don't worry about getting any on the top areas, as you can use a finger to wipe it away. Using this medium, the paint will dry darker than what it looks like when it is applied. If you want the end results to be brighter, then simply apply another layer after the previous has dried. In this instance, only one application was needed. 
We will now give the lighter skin areas some definition and colour by focusing on the shaded areas and where the skin fades into the grey. Firstly, we will use a slightly watered down light tone for this. You can see how watered down this is by the glare of the light that I'm using. Doing a thin watered down layer here, you can judge how much you would like to saturate the skin colours. The more light tone you use, the more orangey brown the colour will be at the end. Once this shade has fully dried, then a darker shade of strong tone was used to emphasise the shadows. As well as the areas where the skin starts to turn grey, like on the troll's sides. This is to help the gradient even more. A tip here for speed is to use your finger or a brush to help blend the shade once applied onto the skin. The skin of the troll is looking pretty good and it didn't take a great deal of time to get him to this point. The skin tones are now more than good enough for gaming, so if you would like to leave it there, then you may want to jump to the Cave Troll details chapter of this video, which you can see in the timestamps within the description. However, for those that want to take the skin to the next level with the extra details, we will continue. Now we are going to focus our efforts on creating textures and creating detail on the flat skin surfaces. Using Banshee Brown and a dry brush, the paint was left damp on the bristles rather than the traditional way you would use a dry brush, and it was applied in a soft manner. Because the bristles of the brush are quite stiff, we want to create faint streaks of paint, and it will follow the contours of the stomach and the chest areas. We are doing two things here. Firstly, adding a lighter layer of paint, and also creating a faint, scratchy look to the surface of the skin. Take your time with this stage. It's better to build up the layers slowly with multiple brush strokes, rather than laying it on thick from the start. Banshee Brown was also used to highlight the face with a standard brush. Once the face was highlighted, the same Banshee Brown was diluted with water slightly and applied to the same areas as we covered on the previous stage. This time, thin, faint lines were painted on both the sculpted creases of the skin, as well as making some lines of our own on the flatter, muscular surfaces. We come to finish off this stage by highlighting the legs, focusing on the kneecaps and the ankles, as well as the top areas of the feet. To define the scales on our troll a little bit more, a thin layer of field grey was applied to the leg scales, and the few that run down the arm of the troll. This greeny grey colour was used to make them stand out slightly over the dark grey and the brown tones that we've used so far. And to finish off the scales, a slightly watered down uniform grey was applied only to the top part of each scale as a highlighting colour. Out of all of the steps today, I think this is the longest one. So once you have finished, pat yourself on the back and grab a cup of tea as a treat. The skin is nearly complete, which is great because it's nearly all of the model. The next part will be to finish off the grey areas. Firstly, using a very watered down hardened carapace with a dry brush. It was applied to the gradient area where the grey meets the brown. This will help blend the gradient even more. And like we did right at the start of the video, where we layered the browns, we will do the same thing on the grey. However, just one layer of paint is needed here, which will keep our grey tones dark. So we used a 50-50 mix of hardened carapace and filthy cape, and applied the paint in the same way as the makeup brush earlier but we used a dry brush instead, as it has a smaller surface area than our makeup brushes. And only the upper sections of the skin were painted, such as the head, arms, and fingers. Once this stage was completely dry, I added some cracked skin that looked like scales onto the hands and the upper part of the troll for some extra texture. 
After seeing the Weta Workshop statue on their website, I love the added details and textures that were sculpted, and I wanted to recreate a small part of that for the cave troll for this video. This was applied with a thin brush and watered down filthy cape. Painting squiggles in random directions, as well as rotating the miniature as you go, this cracked skin texture slowly developed. Once this texture has been applied, the same paint was used to highlight the fingers and the elbows of the miniature. At this point we can leave the cracked texture as it is and it will look perfectly fine. However I want these not to be so pronounced, and for them to look like the cracks are in the skin rather than sitting on top of it. So a final glaze of our original base coat colour, hardened carapace, was used and applied to all of the cracked skin surface. To make a glaze, a small amount of paint was applied to the palette and then a larger amount of medium was mixed in with it. This makes the paint very translucent, kind of like a wash. And for those of you that stuck around to watch the second part of the skin application, I applaud you! I know it seems like a few more steps, but I hope that you can appreciate the added detail that we have done here. Once dry, the cracks look slightly faded, which is spot on. And now, onto the details for the rest of the troll. Mockett's skin was painted into the eye sockets and mouth area to create our shade. And whilst this paint is on our palette, we can add our base coat to the troll's loincloth. A fleshy pink colour was applied to the gums and the lower eyelid using wasteland soil. And this was followed up by highlighting the pink flesh with scar tissue. The troll's teeth were painted with skeleton bone. Luckily, he doesn't have too many teeth, so painting them individually does not take long at all. Using an even finer tipped brush, we will now paint the eyes. A thin line of spaceship exterior is all that we need for the whites of the eye. This was painted above the fleshy pink that we did earlier. Now I'm not sure about you, but I really didn't know just how colourful the troll eye was until I saw the statue from Weta Workshop. So to paint his baby blue eyes, we used a dot of electric blue and placed this in the centre of the eye. As well as painting a small dot inside the blue for the pupil. To make the eye stand out more, we rotated the troll 90 degrees and painted thin black lines at the top and the bottom of the eye. The troll's loincloth, or loin rag, was painted with dark tone to create the shaded areas. As this wash takes a little while to dry, we can base coat our metals in the meantime with rough iron. Rough iron is a nice paint to use as it gives a dark base colour immediately for all types of metals, especially silvers and coppers. And this was applied to the chain, neck collar and the spear. The troll can be armed with either a spear or a hammer. For me, I like both options so I have painted one of each. But let me know in the comments below which is your weapon of choice and why. Now that the wash is dry on the troll's loincloth, we can continue to work on this area. Firstly, to enhance the ragged feel of the cloth, we will apply some fur brown using a dry brush on the upper areas of the folds. By dabbing the brush like so onto these higher areas, it leaves a rough look to it, which is perfect for our troll. Afterwards, we will go over these areas and paint the rough highlights with a 50-50 mix of fur brown and centaur skin. Mixing these two colours together gives a nice lighter tone to the fur brown, and this will become our mid-tone highlight for the cloth. I would say at this point, you don't need to be so precise whilst highlighting here. Imagine that the cloth is neglected by the troll, and it is used for a few different things. To make the highlights a bit punchier, 
Centaur skin was applied to some areas. This brings out the details of the cloth even further. Finally, there are a few metal studs and buckles which hold the cloth together. And these were painted on at the end with shining silver. And now for the toes and fingernails of the troll. These were kept in similar colours to the skin. So we started by base coating them with dark stone. The nails were given a texture by painting vertical lines to create ridges. Remembering the colours that we used before on our Minds of Moria bases, we want to avoid using greys and skeleton bone for the final colour of our nails, as these will blend in and won't be seen as well. So we will finish off these ridge lines by using cobalt skin and applying the paint not as far up as the castle grey colour we used previously and give it that little bit of transition. A thin line of matte black was applied to the base of the nail to separate it from the skin of the toe. And now for the metals. As mentioned earlier, the rough iron is a good base coat for our metals today. So we shall continue by applying a layer of gunmetal using a dry brush. A small amount of paint was added to the brush and our usual method of taking some of this off on our kitchen towel was done before applying the paint. The gunmetal was painted on the upper areas of the chain, leaving the rough iron still visible between the links. For the spear, the method here was to lightly apply the paint with a number of brush strokes and let the silver colour build up. Again, having some of the darker colour still showing through, this will create a nice looking unpolished metal spear. The gun metal was also applied to the neck collar of the troll. To tie these metals in with the gobbins we have painted previously, the metals were given some added rust colour by watering down some dry rust and applying random patches to it. If you haven't seen that video yet, or you're going to work on your goblins after, then check out the How to Paint a Moria Goblin video from the playlist after this one. Remember, this rust colour dries darker as it dries out. So let it dry completely first before adding any more for your desired look. And if you want your metals to look really rusty, then apply the paint straight from the pot. Lastly, shining silver was used to highlight all of the metals. For the chain, only the top areas of the links were painted, keeping it darker underneath. The collar didn't need too much. We mainly focused on the spikes here to make them more pronounced. And the spear was quick to highlight as the sculpt had nice edges to it. A little tip here, when highlighting, you can use either the tip of the brush, like we did for the scales and the loincloth, but when you have a nice edge which can catch the paint quite easily, like this spear, you can rotate the angle of the brush so it is flatter and paint the highlights that way. Give it a go and see what you think. And finally, a bit of slightly diluted matte black was used to paint some shadow lines between the collar and the skin. And to add some further shaded areas to some of the chain links. Now the troll is complete, it can join my hammer version that I painted earlier. And there we go, we have a brutish cave troll, along with our goblins to take on the fellowship and Barlin's tomb. Speaking of which, do let me know which member of the fellowship you would like me to start with when we return to the Minds of Moria series. And if you have found value in the video today or simply liked some of my tips and tricks, then please do let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and maybe tell a friend if they have some Minds of Moria games to play. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.